Hey guys, today we are talking about the chenille plant and more commonly called here the cattail plant. Now they're quite short now and the nights have started to drop below 60 degrees. So I'm bringing it in the greenhouse and that's why I'm talking about it today because it's just an interesting plant. I think it's a great plant This unfortunately in 7a where I live, unfortunately it's grown just as an annual. And so a lot of people don't overwinter it inside of their house or possibly a nice ventilated area that stays above 60 degrees but it's a plant that you can grow as a perennial if you'll take the time and care to make sure you do that in zones 10 and 11 you can plant it out in your garden and it will also go into a state of dormancy but it will really look great for you during the spring blooming time now when i say cattails i'm sure everyone living in my area is thinking about the cattails you see growing next to ponds or streams and although they share the same kind of common name, it's a completely different plant. This is a tropical plant and it is totally different than the common cattail. Now, if you're growing this indoors as a house plant, it's going to do the same thing that it would do in nature out in the wild. It's going to go through a period of dormancy. So that's perfectly normal. Don't be alarmed by no flowers forming. That's just part of its natural state and it will start to flower again in the springtime. Now this Chanel plant is a female plant and the way I can tell that is because of its profuse flowering. The male plant does not flower like this so most of the Chanel plants you see at garden centers are going to be the female plant. Now Chanel plants prefer full sun to a little bit of shade. You don't want to have a lot of shade because it's not going to flower for you like it, this one has. It has been in full shade except for late afternoon sun so that I meant to say full sun. I might have said full shade but it has been in full sun for the entire summer, except late afternoon, probably around, uh, I'd say mid afternoon, the sun goes over a set of trees. And so it is shaded away from the full harsh afternoon sun. So that's what you want to take into account. You don't want it in the hardest sun of the day. You want it to be a little bit of shade in late afternoon sun. Now, if you do plan on growing your Chanel as a house plant, you want to put it in a south facing window that's going to get the maximum amount of sunlight because they do require a lot of light to flower like this. So just remember, you don't want to put this in a north facing window because you want to maximize your light. Now, your Chanel plant is going to want a lot of water. It's, this one has been on a drip irrigation or a micro irrigation system where in the hottest part of summer it was watered three times a day for about two minutes across that period of time. So just remember, you're going to want to make sure you water this every day. Also, you're going to want to use your pH monitor to test the pH of the soil and make sure that it is in a range of about six to seven. It likes the soil slightly acidic. Now, when I say they like water, you want to water about every two or three days if you're doing heavy soakings and allow it to dry just a little bit between each watering. Although they do like water, they don't want the soil to be completely soggy, just well moist and well draining. Now, as I said earlier, Chanel plants do not like temperatures below 60 degrees. So if you have it outside and winter is starting to approach or autumn is starting to approach and the nighttime temperatures are starting to dip below 60 degrees, that's when you're going to want to bring it into your basement. And if your temperatures in your basement do the same thing or garage, you want to bring it inside to where it can main, you can maintain temperatures for your Chanel plant above 60 degrees. So as far as fertilization goes, I would recommend using Schultz Bloom Plus at half its recommended strength and do that every week and because they do like to flower and they're going to be heavy feeders. Now you can also supplement your Chanel plant by putting a little bit of worm castings and I'll link that below the particular brand I use. I usually buy it online, have it shipped to me because I don't use a massive amount, but I do put it in a lot of new plantings and especially house plants. So worm castings is great. If you want something that maybe you can pick up at your local big box store like Lowe's or Home Depot, then you can go with black cow. They may or may not have the worm casting. So that's kind of an iffy thing. And that's why I usually order mine online because they don't always have it in stock. So when we picked this Chanel plant up at our nursery that was near our home, I was really curious about this plant because I'd never seen it before here. It's kind of a rare plant. You don't see it at the big box store, if ever, if I've ever seen it there. But there's an even more rare Chanel plant, a white Chanel plant. And if you can find that one, that's really interesting. And also there's a dwarf variety as well. Now, this Chanel is starting to show some signs of cooler nighttime temperatures. Like for instance, this 
particular flower stem is starting to turn brown and you want to make sure once that happens that you prune them all off the plant because next spring it will be even better if you do that in the fall. Now when some of my flowers started fading on the Chanel plant earlier in the summer I thought wow this will be a great opportunity to grow some from seed and after doing some more research you're much better off taking a cutting and growing from that. I'll go through that process in just a sec. But the Chanel plant, as I said earlier, it grows a female plant and a male plant. And if you're growing from seed, you might end up with a male plant that's not going to produce a flower show like this one has. So it's a lot better to go with cuttings or a new nursery plant. So propagating your Chanel plant from a cutting is pretty simple. You're just going to take a four to six inch cutting. You're going to remove your flower. You're going to remove most of your lower leaves. You're going to dip it in to your rooting hormone and you want a combination of 50% perlite and 50% potting mix. I've got a recipe for homemade potting mix that will save you a lot of money. I'll link that up above and you will dip it in your rooting hormone and start it in that soil mixture. Now you want to water your soil in your propagated Chanel and you want to keep it moist but not waterlogged. You also want to remember that the cutting you took, you want to make sure that you left at least two leaves on that cutting. Now, once your cutting has taken root, you can either leave it in that small pot. I'm going to use a three inch pot to take some cuttings from this plant, but you can leave it in that pot until spring or you can repot it into a larger container. But I'm just going to leave them in those because these are so small and they'll be out of the way for several months. Now, as far as overwintering your Chanel plant, you're going to want to cut it back from its current size like this to about half. And you're going to bring it inside and you're going to keep it moist. But just remember, it needs lots of light when you have it inside your home because this is a plant that really loves strong light. Chanel plants also love lots of humidity. So if it's possible, you can keep it near a humidifier. That's going to really help as well. Or use a misting sprayer to occasionally mist it once or twice a week. As you know, AC in the wintertime can be extremely dry and it can dry out your plant and also it can cause a lot of damage. So just remember you want that moisture. You just want to remember that you keep it in a nice humid environment. And if you have to manually mist it or keep it near a humidifier, that's really important. Now, even though you're misting it, you do want to reduce your watering and fertilization schedule and bring your fertilization schedule maybe just to once a month at a very weak solution, maybe one quarter of what you would do of the recommended dosage. And also watering, you want to reduce that by 75% as well. Now, while your chenille plant is growing in the garden, sometimes in July and August, it can be attacked by spider mites. And I have a very specific answer for that. I've got a homemade solution that's all natural. And I'll link that up above. So you can take care of those spider mites without having to use harsh chemicals on your chenille plant. Now chenille plants can be an ever blooming plant if it receives the right amount of light, nutrients, and water. So that's something to take into account if you can do that. If you want to encourage more blooming, you can deadhead the current flowers off and that will produce even more flowers given it's in the right conditions. Now, unfortunately, the fastest way most people kill, kill their chenille plant is by letting it dry out. These plants do like the soil to remain constantly moist. So if it does dry out, that's probably going to kill it. Now, on the flip side of that coin, too much water will cause the leaves to start turning yellow. So if you see a lot of yellowing leaves and the temperatures are not cold at night, then you're probably overwatering and you need a good water meter to make sure that your plant is not in the wet category, only moist on a daily basis. So guys, I just wanted to make this quick video today because I brought this in the greenhouse and I've got a lot of cuttings to take and I'm hoping to multiply this and have five, six or seven really nice hanging baskets where I don't have to purchase them because they're not cheap. So anyways, if you want to take those cuttings at the end of the season and try to root them inside indoors, you can do that. Guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate every subscriber and every view. If you have a comment or if I left something out, please leave it down below. Have a great day.